Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at making curly hair strands using the new hair system in Blender 3.3 Beta. Up to this point, we've been looking at some ways to do braids, but we haven't really looked at ways to do curls. I'm pretty happy with some of the results I've been getting so far with this, and maybe you can take it even further. So let's jump right in. With our object selected, we'll press Shift A and add a new empty hair object. We'll collapse the surface to form geometry node modifier and add a new geometry node modifier. We'll go into sculpt mode on our hair object and add a hair to work with. You will want to go into your render properties panel, go down to curves and make sure your view display is turned up to two subdivisions so that we can see our work as we go here in flat shaded mode. Right off the bat, we're going to need to resample this curve in order to get enough geometry to work with. We'll tie the count to the input and call it resolution. Since we're wanting to change the position of our geometry, we'll need to add a set position node. Now we need to determine how we're going to do this. When thinking about graphing spirals, my first thoughts usually go to polar based equations rather than Cartesian. So if we could graph a circle going around this hair strand, we could use that as the basis of our curl. So let's see how we would do that. The polar graph of a circle uses the radius of the circle that we want to draw and the angle at any given point along that circle. So to go all the way around the circle, your angle goes from 0 to 2 pi, which is also known as tau. And then your radius is however large you want your circle to be. In this case, we want this circle to be spread out all the way around this strand. So we'll use our spline parameter node to get the factor where we are along the curve. This will drive our angle. Now since our factor goes from 0 to 1 and not 0 to tau, we'll want to go ahead and multiply the factor by tau. Here we can just type in the word TAU and that will change to 6.283 which is 2 times pi. So now the factor will go from 0 to 2 pi. Next, we'll want to do the equation for a circle, which is x is equal to the cosine of our angle times the radius that we want, and y is equal to the sine of the angle times the radius that we want. So we'll add in a combine x, y, z node. We'll take the cosine of our angle, and then we'll multiply that by some value that we want our radius to be. Of course, we'll want to be able to drive our radius from the input. And we'll set this to x. We can very simply do the same thing for y. Change this to sine, multiply it by our radius, and assign this to y. Let's assign this to the offset to see what we're getting. If we look from top view, we can see that we're generating something spiral-like so we're going in the right direction. However, we are going to need to rotate this so it lines up with our existing strand. I'm going to go ahead and bring the radius down a little bit. Since we've created a bunch of XY offsets, let's go ahead and rotate those so that they go around our strand, which will be our Z. To do this, we'll use a vector rotate node. We'll set the type to an Euler rotation and we want to rotate this around our tangent, which is the direction our curve is pointing at each given control point. So if we add our curve tangent node, we have a vector. Now we need to change this vector into a rotation. We do that with a utilities align Euler to vector node. We'll plug our tangent vector into the vector socket and now plug the rotation into our vector rotate node. Since the spiral itself is on the xy axis, we want our curve to be the z axis. So we want to align this to the z component. Already, we're heading in the right direction. I'm going to lower our radius some more. And although we're not connected to the scalp yet, we've got the right idea. The next thing we'll want is to determine how many turns are in our curl. Since here we multiplied our factor by tau to get one full rotation, if we multiply this some more, we can get more rotations. So we'll duplicate this multiply node and bring it over here. 
and then tie this second value into our input. Now, as I increase this value, we'll see more curls. However, you may notice that your strand looks weird and that as you increase your value, it may seem like it's actually getting less curly. This has to do with how many subdivisions are actually being shown here in the viewport. I'm gonna add another geometry node modifier and use my set radius node. First, I'll bump up my resolution so I have more points to work with. Let's say 100. Now you'll see as I increase the rotations here, eventually things get a little squirrely. But here in rendered mode, you can see that the curls are actually happening. One thing we'll want to do for realism is to have our curls get larger and smaller along the strand. So we'll need to be able to adjust the radius as it goes up and down the factor. We can do this by using the spline parameter factor and a float curve node to adjust the radius. So if I add a float curve node and plug in my factor, this will now go from zero to one, just like it did before. I can use this as a driving factor for my radius. I'll simply multiply my radius by this factor. And as you can see here, when my factor is zero, my radius is zero. And so now my start point is where it was originally. And as I go along the curl, the spiral gets longer. If I don't want a linear increase, I could of course change this to something a bit more artistic. We'll add some curls here to see what we get. This is moving in the right direction. One immediate problem you're going to notice is that there's too much uniformity between all of these strands. So we'll want to add some noise to each strand. Let's see how we can do that. We'll want to access the index of each strand. Now, that isn't the index here on the spline parameter. That's the index of each control point for each strand. We'll want to use just the input index node. However, if we were to use the index node against this geometry in the set position node, we would be working with the indices of all of the points in all of the curves. And that's not what we want. We want noise to be applied to each strand wholly instead of to each individual point. So we need this to be the index of each spline. To do that, we need to get this index from the spline domain. We can do that using the interpolate domain node. We'll change the type to integer and the domain we want to interpolate is the spline domain. Let's see what this looks like. If we open up our spreadsheet view and control shift click on this geometry, and then control shift click on our interpolate domain, and we go down to our curve control points. Let's change our resolution for a moment just down to five. So now each strand only has five control points. If we look here in our spreadsheet, we see that the value coming into our viewer node off of our interpolate domain is now the index of each spline for those control points. So control points zero through four have a value of zero, five through nine have a value of one, and so on. That means I can use this value as a random seed value for each strand, and each strand will get the same seed value across the entire strand. We could use this in a couple of different ways. We could use it as a seed to multiply against a random value for our factor, for our angle, or for our radius. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna use it to multiply against our angle. I'll add a random value node, set to float, and then I'll plug in this value as the ID. Otherwise, the ID would be different for each control point of every curve. Now within each strand, that ID will stay the same for the whole strand, applying the same amount of noise for that whole strand. If I increase my resolution again, you'll see that we start to get a much more natural look here. Next, I'm gonna add another geometry nodes modifier and add my multiply hair control node. I've talked about this one in a previous video. Another issue you're gonna see here is that all of these strands are the same length. So we'll wanna vary the lengths of each of these strands. We'll add another geometry node modifier and we'll add a trim curve node. And then we can simply add a utility random value node and plug it into our end value. Of course, your results at this point will depend largely on how many hairs you've added, what kind of spread you use, and other types of choices. 
However, this should give you the basic idea for your curls. Experiment with where you want to add some randomness. Multiply other values by random numbers and expose those factors to your input. That way you can create inputs that give you a lot of control. All of these hair nodes are now available on my Gumroad page. So make sure to go check them out and download them. And if you want to leave a tip when you do, that'd be much appreciated. Anyway, I hope this video inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.